I want to welcome everybody to IFTWA's Park City webinar. As ski season will be here shortly and the snowflakes begin to fall, let's traverse the slopes that draw travelers to experience Park City with all its winter sports and activities. Our hosts, Dan Howard and Rachel Matt, I'm going to say it wrong, Matt. You're doing I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm doing well this morning. Make up the communications teams at Park City Chamber of Commerce and the Convention and Visitors Bureau in Park City, Utah. Rachel is originally from Vermont and is a graduate of the University of Vermont. Like many Northeasterners, once she skied Utah's greatest snow on earth, she got hooked. She moved permanently and has been in Park City for the last five years. Dan has been in Park City for 10 years and was previously tourism director for the city of Beverly Hills and the Napa Valley wine region and spent five years working for San Francisco CBB representing his hometown with a focus on international business. Dan is a graduate of the University of Southern California and earned his master's degree from Harvard University. Together, they share the year-round story angles of their mountain community with journalists from every corner of the United States and Canada. So now I will introduce Ron and please, please join, uh, get, let us get started in learning about Visit Park City. Excellent. Well, we will pull up our slide here. There we go. Wonderful. There we go. Okay, so we will kick things off with our first slide, which details uh, what the layout of our presentation is going to look like. We will begin with what's going on right now in the fall season, and then we will transition to what to expect this winter, which will be the bulk of our presentation. And we do plan to highlight uh, everything related to the pandemic as well and sharing insight on what the community is looking like and what operations are supposed to be looking like for the winter ahead. Uh, and then we will wrap it up with our questions at the very end. So thank you to Corey and Scott for fielding those. As a reminder, as they said, if any of the listeners have questions during our presentation, please add those into the question box and then we will make sure we get to them at the very end. So we are ready to get things going here. What is new this fall? Perhaps the biggest news that we have to share is that the brand new Salt Lake City International Airport just opened up on September 15th. It is a Delta hub, so currently all Delta flights are operating out of there. It is a slow transition, so the old terminal is still in uh, operation. However, on October 27th, the other airlines will also transition over, which includes American Alaska, Frontier, JetBlue, Southwest, and United. And this airport has the capacity to have 340 flights inbound and outbound each day. So we have been looking forward to this for years and it is finally here. So very, very excited. And just a reminder that the Salt Lake City International is literally 25 minutes from Park City. So a lot of people think that Park City is over an hour away from the airport. It's less than a half an hour from the airport. Yeah. And this is one of those great airports that really understands snow. Uh, no matter how many storms we get over the winter, this airport doesn't close. <laughs> and 300 you know, plus flights a day, it, it's very uh, reliable. And we have a lot of journalists who visit and when they see that snow is coming, they get worried if they need to move down to the airport or that they're gonna get stuck and they don't realize Salt Lake City International Airport doesn't operate like small mountain town airports. It's a very impressive facility and it really knows snow. And we mentioned already the greatest snow on earth. Our snow in general is a lot easier to deal with than a lot of snow from the Northeast or um, in other places where there's more humidity. We have very little humidity and our climate is 
uh, considered high desert and that really impacts the snow in terms of being very fluffy and very easy to move around. So uh, it helps our airport do a great job. <laughs> So we wanted to talk about what we've just coming through. Um, we are really in the heart of fall. Our fall foliage generally starts the end of August. So we've just had it for about five weeks and uh, that's earlier than most of the United States because of our altitude. But it's a really beautiful uh, time of year in Park City. It's, it's a special time in Park City because a lot of times when a destination has low room rates, it's because it's not an attractive time of year. But in our case, our lowest rates of the year are what I consider during our most attractive time of year, which is the fall. Um, it's just shoulder season between our very busy summers and our very busy winters. And so room rates are very attractive, but the area is absolutely stunning. And this year with well, um, our ski season ended slightly early, around March 15th, um, because of the pandemic. And it would have ended around April 15th. So it was about four weeks. And we didn't know what our summer would look like. But our summer was very successful. A lot of people heard that Park City was a really nice place to come and be socially distant. And we have a lot of activities and a lot of accommodations that allowed for that. We also were very fast to shut down the town on March 15th, which was before Los Angeles or New York did, and implement a mandatory mask ordinance. And we found that our visitors this summer were only willing to come to a place that had a mandatory mask ordinance in place. So we, they came. Uh, a lot of them was road tripping. <laughs> um, and there were a lot of Californians. It's only one state over you know, coming through Nevada. And so we had a lot of Californians, but we had license plates in our parking lots from almost all 50 states. People were seeing Park City as a great place and it exceeded our expectations that we had reset in April for what our summer might have looked like. And it has continued through the fall. Now a lot of families are still here with their kids who are doing uh, remote learning, but a lot of our properties uh, prepared for that. One of our hotels even has something called the Academy, which is a, a place to bring your kids and have them study during the day in the hotel, get their um, distance learning done while the parents are on vacation. So we're actually seeing kids here in the fall, which is something they normally would have gone back to school over Labor Day. So it's a really attractive fall. You can see our historic Main Street there. Um, our town is an authentic silver mining town, and it was founded in the late 1800s, and we have 47 buildings on the National Historic Register in our historic Main Street District. And uh, this district is also special because we have a very restricted, um, it's an ordinance that, that limits the number of chain operators. So, you won't have a chain restaurant on our main street. You won't see a store that's part of a national chain. Uh, it, it keeps it a very unique visit experience. And I'm so happy that our city council and our county understand the importance of that. And I don't have to remind them to keep it special and, and not expand that ordinance so that our town remains a place that's worth visiting and, you know, doesn't look like everywhere else. You won't find a Starbucks on our main street, which is nice. But if you need one, there's one in the outlying area. <laughs> um, our stay safe to stay open mandate um, is continuing all the way through January 8th. And it's likely that it will be extended beyond that because it's been helpful. Um, it's helped people to know that this isn't a place to come and throw big parties. Um, it's a quiet place and you, you know, with your family. And, and our COVID case numbers have, maintained, have really been uh, under control. We're at a, a 5% transmission rate, which is considered very moderate. Um, we've had one fatality since March, in which any fatality is, is incredibly sad, but it's 
very, we're very grateful that everyone else um, has recovered in the town all the way from March. And our, the school, getting the schools back in the fall is what's created some of the um, new cases, but our young kids are all recovering from it, which is very, very helpful. Um, I wanted to um, describe that our Main Street has restaurants that have been able to expand their footprints using what's called dining decks. Um, you can see one of them on the left there. And this, because the tables are now being spaced further apart from each other, the expanded footprints are allowing the restaurants to maintain some of the same capacity. And a couple of them are going to attempt to keep them <laughs> all winter long because a lot of the dining decks have um, roofs on them and they have heaters, space heaters. So that's going to be one of the plans there. And on the right, um, our escape room, which is very popular, we have a silver mine themed escape room, which is an indoor escape room called the Mine Trap. But this summer they created an outdoor scavenger hunt around Main Street um, for those that uh, really like to do escape rooms but don't want to be inside. Of course, with the pandemic, we are seeing that people are prioritizing outdoor experiences over indoor experiences. And we have many offerings available, but we did want to highlight two of them that we especially love. With fly fishing, we have a number of riverways in our media area, um, many of which are blue ribbon qualified. And so it's a, a great escape to be able to be in the water. Uh, we are a landlocked state, but we see uh, outdoor water recreation as a very important part of our culture. And when you're fly fishing, um, it is um, very satisfying to be able to see the greater landscape, especially in the fall season where we do have the foliage, as Dan was describing earlier. So that's certainly something it's available year round, but we do yeah. have it in the fall. 12 months a year. And it, by the way, our rivers are catch and release. So this fish has a very sad look on his face, but he's gonna be back in the river any minute. <laughs> That's right, and then for biking, our trail network has over 400 miles of trails around town. So that's a great way as well for either recreation or for leisure sightseeing. And biking can take form as mountain biking, road cycling, electric biking, fat biking. So there are a lot of options available and something that's very important to locals in town. And we certainly encourage visitors to um, check out our, our trail network as well. Summit County has an e-bike rental system. Yeah. And if you've never been on an e-bike, um, it's a special experience. We're a little bit of a mountainous terrain. So when you need a little boost, you just ask the bike to give you a little extra, uh, but you don't need to engage. Uh, it's not a motorcycle. So you don't need to engage it uh, unless you're really on a, a steep hill, but it's nice to see. And people have really enjoyed the Summit County e-bike share all summer long and, and the fall. This is the bulk of our presentation, which we're excited to be able to give you a peek at what winter is gonna look like. Rachel and I are getting media requests you know, every hour right now from all over the country asking what is winter going to look like? And we have answers, so we wanna share it with you today. Um, the biggest news is that it's going to happen. There's going to be a winner and our town's going to be open for it and we're looking forward to having people here. That's right. So in town, we do have two major resorts that are world-class ski experiences. We have Deer Valley Resort, which is high-end and known for being skier only. They do not allow snowboarders on the mountain. Uh, every year, it's normal for them to have a, a capacity limit for every day so that they can maintain the amount of guests that are coming uh, on the chairlist. And that's especially important this year with the pandemic. So face masks are required to be worn in the public settings, even though it is outdoors. And they will be closely monitoring the outdoor capacity as well. Park City Mountain is our other esteemed resort. It is the largest resort in the United States. And typically they do not put a, a cap on the daily occupancy limit. However, with the pandemic, they are uh, resorting to an online reservation system and they are asking all of their guests to reserve a space. So again, that will really ensure the health and safety of the guests who are able to ski that day. And just for the geography, we have that historic Main Street that I uh, put a photo of. So on the west side of the historic Main Street is Park City Mountain Resort. 
and on the east side of historic Main Street is Deer Valley Resort. That's how big the town is, that these two ski resorts are literally just on either side of the Main Street. A lot of people think that Deer Valley is far away from Park City or that it's separate from Park City. It's literally on the east side of downtown Main Street. And you can go from one resort to the other with very with ease, but you would have to have a ski pass for either resort. There's no shared um, pass. And it's important to note that right now there are two major worldwide ski passes. One's called the Epic Pass and that's Vail Resorts properties, and Park City Mountain is part of Vail Resorts. The other pass is called the Icon Pass, and that's from the Altera Mountain Company, and Deer Valley is part of Altera Mountain Company. So my favorite football metaphor, we have a team in the NFC and we have a team in the AFC, both in our little town, which is great, because <laughs> very few towns can say that, but those passes have become very important. And then the newest attraction to Utah and Park City is Woodward Park City. The Woodward brand is a collection of sports training facilities that target um, sports skill development and progression. So it's great for all ages. Um, they do have a ski hill out back. They have uh, an emphasis on skating and trampoline, again, to increase skills. So it is highly encouraged for adults to try something new and for kids to have a great space to get their energy out. So uh, for any folks who may not be interested in skiing or snowboarding or are wishing to mix it up, uh, we do have quite a few other outdoor recreation offerings as well. We did list a few here, so I will call those out. Um, but people do tend to really love snow tubing, snowshoeing, sleigh ride, snowmobiling, dog sledding, ice skating, and fat tire biking, which is what that picture on the bottom right is. You can see that thick tire. Yeah, and I think this winter, those activities are gonna be more important than ever because if there is capacity constraint, uh, there's still so many ways to enjoy the winter, so many activities, and a lot of ski resorts that are isolated only have the downhill as their option. But Park City is very diverse, and so it gives people so many different ways to enjoy the winter and even for family members that don't like downhill, if there's any, there are so many other ways for them to enjoy the winter. And they can spend multiple days here and it's not dependent on, strictly on those ski passes. There's just so many ways. And we're gonna talk to you about a couple of the new attractions or the other attractions off of off mountain that are gonna be more important than ever. So we are very lucky to be in a region that has quite a few different offerings. Uh, if you have a, a rental car, we love the ice castles. Those are over in Midway, Utah, about a half hour outside of Park City. And it is very popular for folks in our town to head over there to see the other attractions that Midway has to offer. The ice castles are, um, of course, a winter display. So these ice structures are formed in December and they run through February or March, depending on the weather. But they're a spectacular evening experience to see because they have the light array. And again, it's a, an excellent outdoor experience to participate in. And you've never seen more kids dressed up in outfits from the movie Frozen, That's taking true. pictures along these ice castles. It's very special. That's true. <laughs> and then we have something very exciting happening this December uh, through early January. We have a new art installment going in on Main Street. These are going to be six foot tall snow globes with art themes of Park City's culture, which includes the Olympic legacy, our um, outdoor recreation, the wildlife. And this is really important because arts and culture is such a prominent part of Park City. And with the pandemic taking place, usually we have a lot of festivals and events going on that centralize around our arts and culture but did have to be postponed until next year. And so this is really exciting for locals, especially because it's uh, an opportunity to bring art back into the environment and they will be interactive and uh, just a nice way to really showcase the talent that we have in this community and the value that's placed on arts and entertainment. Yeah, we've never had these snow globes uh, install in installation on Main Street. They're interactive, so when uh, a visitor comes up to one of them, it activates, and then you'll see different wildlife. The snowflakes will be falling, 
Um, so it's very interactive, just like the um, the ice castles. These are it's all about interacting with art instead of just viewing it, but you actually get to be a part of it. Um, we're excited to see these, and I hope they come back next Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and I am seeing some excellent questions popping up in the chat. So again, we'll look forward to answering those at the end, but thank you guys for all the creative and kind of insightful questions that you are asking. We'll look forward to touching base yeah. shortly. Um, another item that we wanted to address is the more leisure way to enjoy our community. Law treatments are very popular here. When you're in the mountain environment, you just feel the sense of calm for being at higher altitudes, being surrounded by the mountainscapes. It's just a very rewarding and rejuvenating time. And our spas are no exception to providing that sort of retreat um, on table practices like massages and facials. Those are all still operating. Our pools for lounging and dipping are also open. You might find differences uh, specific to each resort and their protocols on additional amenities, whether they're offered or not. I know a lot of saunas and steam rooms are closed down for sanitation purposes. However, as a property feels that it's safe to maintain those, it's always worth checking back in to see if those are available. Additionally, yoga is such a popular um, leisure recreation activity that people like to participate in, whether it's for meditation or just for some nice stretching and a creative way that we have that in town is through stand-up paddleboard yoga experience in a geothermal crater. That crater is actually located near where the ice castles are, but it's nice that our town does like to think of creative ways to um, mix it up a little bit and, and make some very common practices something more memorable and special. Yeah, it started this summer. Our, our recreation outfitters had to figure out how to maintain social distance practices all summer long, and they were very creative. Um, our guests were so great and total compliance and wanted it. And, and so you're seeing even on the left there, um, socially distanced yoga. Um, but I just really appreciate that. They were, the outfitters, very entrepreneurial and very quick to, they took the health ordinances of the county very seriously and figured out how to adjust their operations. And, and we actually held a media fam in September, which was, exciting a lot of places aren't considering doing in-person media fams but we did socially distanced fams showed everyone how you could do that and our spas were actually open for that fam and were able to give spa treatments to our media guests which i was so happy about because i think people are in a great mood when they're finished their spa uh, appointment and they were able to do that this just in september so we anticipate that being available this winter. These folks have, our resort, ski resorts and our hotels and our restaurants and our spas have figured out how they are comfortable adjusting their practices and protocols to be compliant with the county. And that's why this campaign, Stay Safe to Stay, to stay Open, they had to demonstrate that their protocols were in compliance in order for them to be able to stay open. And, and they did a great job. Yes, and the pictures you're looking at right now uh, just for perspective, on the left, you see the image of the stand-up paddleboard yoga in the Homestead Crater, which is located in Midway, uh, again, near where those ice castles are, which is comfortable. The water is warm year-round and the air temperature is warm year-round. And on the right, you are seeing the beautiful pool at the spa montage at Montage Deer Valley. And that trend gives us a, a nice segue to one of our big um, headlines for this year. And it comes from the recent uh, ratings that were given by Forbes. Uh, Forbes, of course, is luxury media uh, publication. And for 2021, um, Park City area has 21 Forbes rated venues for 2021. And to give you perspective with some of the other luxury mountain destinations that you are familiar with, Aspen has five Forbes rated venues for 2021. Jackson Hole has six. And Bale has 10. So for Park City to be uh, able to ha ha offer 21 Forbes rated venues, I don't think Park City is internationally recognized as the most luxurious of the mountain towns, but Forbes clearly has um, spoken otherwise. But I really appreciate that while Park City offers these luxury experiences, uh, the town's um, attitude. The town doesn't 
come across as an elitist destination. It's a very warm, welcoming destination. And it, by the way, it does have a wide range of accommodations. Uh, we're gonna talk about some of them now, but it's not all luxury. It's just really nice to be able to say we've got that much luxury, more ski in, ski out accommodations, true ski in, ski out, which we can talk to you about what that means to be true ski in, ski out. It's one of the most overused uh, slogans in our industry. Um, and a lot of places are not ski in, ski out, true ski in, ski out, but we are. And um, we have a number of accommodations that we just wanted to share. This first one is called the Lodge at Blue Sky, which many of you would not necessarily know about because it's very new to our area. Um, and both, it's only got 44 um, accommodations. So it's been very popular this summer for social distancing and families. Uh, in fact, I suspect it will be more popular in the summer than in the winter because its location is not on either Deer Valley Resort or Park City Mountain Resort but um, both the lodge, its Edge Spa, and its Utah restaurant are already uh, Forbes uh, rated in its just over a year and a half. Um, it is part of the Auberge Resorts collection. Uh, this is Montage Deer Valley, 220 rooms. Uh, it's spa Montage is 35,000 square feet and 29 treatment rooms, so it's the largest spa in Utah. Uh, it's Apex Steakhouse. Uh, is Forbes rated as well. And I would put a photo there of its very delightful Apre Lounge, which is an on-mountain uh, lounge for Apre Ski. And Vufflico is the uh, beverage of choice there and caviar. Um, and, but if you're traveling with family, if you may be more attracted to the Daly's Pub, which is in Montage and that has four bowling lanes and uh, lots of sports and video games. So two different forms of opera at Montage. Uh, this is the only five-star lodge and five-star spa in Utah. It's the Stein Erickson Lodge. And they have a restaurant called Glitterton that is also uh, a Forbes recognized property. Stein Erickson was a very famous Norwegian skier, downhill skier. He sort of reinvented the sport and I was lucky to get to know him. He passed away only a couple of years ago but the lodge still has his name. And the Champions Club is their version of Daly's Pub with big oversized video games and lots of fun for the family in a, a separate family pool area. And then on the bottom there, you're seeing an image of their new residences. This has been a very popular offering this summer because of families looking to socially distance and stay just by themselves. Um, and they have that beautiful infinity pool that you can see there and uh, that will be popular all winter long. This property also has a four-star property called the Chateau, and um, it's definitely family-friendly, also located on Deer Valley uh, Ski Resort Mountain. The Waldorf Astoria uh, is located in Canyons Village, which is on the Park City Mountain Resort. And Waldorf is a four-star rated property with a beautiful spa. Its powder restaurant is also Forbes recognized. And last winter, they did a very creative animated um, activity called Glossoria, which you can sort of see. It's an igloo kind of clear globe that you do a private dining experience in just with you and your family or your small group up to five people. And so I think it would make sense for them to bring that back given it's it's, social distance possibilities. It's through Powder Restaurant that you would make the reservation. But it was created last February before pandemic, and I think it makes more sense than ever to keep that offering. So we'll see if Frostoria comes back this December. Um, our next Forbes rated property is called Westgate, and Westgate Park City is the only mountain resort in the Westgate national chain. There's a big Westgate in Las Vegas and lots of them in Florida, but we have a mountain one in Park City. And uh, their Edge Steakhouse is a Forbes rated property and their, Ed, and their Westgate Spa is also Forbes rated. And that's located in Canyons Village on the uh, Park City Mountain Resort as well. So not too far from Waldorf Astoria. This is the St. Regis Deer Valley and they are Forbes rated. They have the Remed Spa, which is actually their brand spa throughout their brand. 
and a beautiful new restaurant only from last year called Rhyme Steak and Seafood. Um, we, we really felt it was important to go through these properties because I don't think that everyone in the country knew that Park City had so many luxury brand offerings and we're very low key. Our, our town is low key and I hope it always stays that way, but we have great luxury offerings across uh, so many uh, luxury brands. This is one that's really under the radar, but very popular. It's called the Washington Schoolhouse and it is a renovation from the late 1800s schoolhouse from when Park City was founded. It's literally a block over from Main Street in historic district. And it's got 16 guest rooms that are, as you can see from the image, just beautifully decorated and it includes a, a, a stunning breakfast in house. Uh, this property has been promoted all summer long as one of the best places that a small group, whether it be a corporate group or a family, can take over the entire property and and socially distance within Washington Schoolhouse and that that story has been written um, over and over from from media outlets all summer long and and we think it will continue to be uh, written about this winter as people are looking for these kinds of options because obviously with 16 rooms you can do things there that you can't in these other larger properties. Uh, we wanted to make a point of the River Horse on Main, our beautiful restaurant on Main Street on the left is a Forbes rated property and it's been on the Wine Spectator uh, uh, list, a word of excellence. It's our, it's our most prestigious restaurant, long running. And then it was joined this past year by our newer restaurant on Main called Courchevel Bistro. Courchevel is of course the sister city of Park City in France. And so this is a French restaurant that was uh, named to honor that and in CNN named it one of the top 20 restaurants for 2020. So we're really proud that it's on Main Street. We love all our restaurants here. With so many luxury offerings, you know that our guests are expecting uh, Park City to have fine dining. And I've mentioned some of the restaurants that are inside the, the hotels themselves, the resorts that are well rated, but we also have them on our Main Street. So previously, Dan had mentioned at St. Regis Deer Valley, they have a restaurant called Ryan Seafood and Steak. They have a sister property that is our hidden gem. It's called Ryan Seafood and Raw Bar, and it's located in a cabin on top of one of Deer Valley Resort's mountain peaks. And to access it, you can ski and ski out of the property, or if you are not skiing for the day, you can take a gondola up to it as well. But it's a really fabulous place because it's very small and intimate and the seafood is pretty spectacular. I love so it. <laughs> it's really phenomenal experience to be able to go to the top of a mountain in a landlocked state and eat your lobster roll or shuck those oysters and watch the Wasatch Mountains in the distance and, and take in the view. So we certainly love this spot and uh, find it very appealing and not a lot of people know about it. So we like yeah. to point it out. Yeah, it hasn't been covered by many of our Park City um, features. Um, but it's only open in the winter <laughs> and you don't have to be a skier in order to go there. You just have to be willing to walk onto the mountain and take a gondola. But once you're up there, the 360 degree views are really special. And um, Matt, who owns the restaurant, is from, the, from New England and he really understands seafood and he really understands lobster rolls. Um, the one on the right is my favorite. Um, it's called Connecticut style, so it's not bread or have mayonnaise but it's just drawn butter right on top of the lobster. So you're getting more of the taste of the lobster, but they have um, more traditional mayonnaise lobster rolls for, for those that love the traditional. I just think that his Connecticut roll is awesome. <laughs> okay, and Utah has a reputation for some pretty strict liquor laws. However, Park City definitely defies this and we have very much our own spirit trail with a number of distilleries in town, a uh, wine cellar. The two distilleries are High West Distillery, best known for their whiskey, Alpine Distilling, best known for their gin, Old Town Cellars, which blends their own uh, wines from vineyards that they source either domestically or overseas. Wasatch Brew Pub is located on Main Street. And the eating establishment has their own Meet Your Own Bloody Mary bar. So that's a, a really fun brunch offering. And over at Hearth and Hill, they have a build your own old fashioned, which is pretty unique. So 
there are certainly clever ways to, to uh, enjoy some libations out here. By the way, the eating establishment is owned by a fellow um, from Modern Family, the television show. Uh, he plays Phil Dunphy on the show. And um, I think if I could think of a celebrity that best represents Park City, I think Phil Dunphy would be the perfect one because <laughs> he's very low key, but fun. Um, the reason Park City has such an extensive spirits trail as opposed to the rest of Utah has to do with the way that it was founded. Most of Utah was founded by pioneers coming, looking for religious freedom. Park City was founded by silver miners <laughs> that were looking for fortunes uh, in the mountains. And those are very distinctive reasons for a town to be founded. So you can imagine that Park City back in 1880 with all of its silver miners from Europe, a lot of them were from Europe, um, used Main Street, the saloons, the live music, the whiskey, and it's st still that way today. But it's always been a, a little bit out of step with the other towns of Utah. It turns out that skiing is very complimentary <laughs> with some of what Park City does. A lot of people are looking for that nightlife um, and our town has always had it very authentically. Um, but that's the reason that we have a spirits trail and, and the, the Wasatch uh, Brew Pub was the first license, for example, to do you know, uh, micro brews in Utah. Um, it's, it's, it's really nice to see, and people are delightfully surprised if they thought that they couldn't get a drink in Utah, Park City definitely shows them differently. We wanted to point out also one of the uh, events that we're most famous for worldwide, which is the Sundance Film Festival. Um, it usually takes place over 10 days in January. Because of the pandemic, they have uh, shifted their schedule and shortened it and reduced their footprint but it will be taking place live <laughs> um, from January 28th to February 3rd. So only seven days instead of 10, and it's starting a week later than normal, and it's only gonna have three venues that are showing, uh, so tickets are gonna be hard to come by. The upside of this is that it, we usually don't have enough rooms for our ski season in January, and making this, because the, the people coming here for the film festival take the rooms. But now this is going to make it possible for more people to ski here and enjoy our winter activities. But Sundance will still be taking place. You just really are going to have to have your act together if you're planning to do a screening uh, because the number of tickets are going to be so small uh, and the number of venues. But I would say that's going to be true this winter more than ever before of any plans. You used to be able to you know, walk up to a ski window and buy your ski pass if you just decided you wanted to ski. And this year, you really have to um, have a plan. You'll still be able to do that in Deer Valley, but they may be at capacity. So it's probably smart to know your dates in advance, to get those ski passes on your days confirmed in advance, and then build your trip around those, day, those days, getting your accommodation, and then especially your restaurants. If those footprints are smaller and you have restaurants in mind, you wanna be getting your restaurant reservations on the days that you're skiing. It's, it's just gonna require more commitment in advance. A lot of skiers do like to plan in advance, so we're helpful, help, we're glad about that. I will also say a lot of skiers are really comfortable having their faces covered because of what it means to ski. So the transition to making sure you always have a mask isn't gonna be that hard for skiers because they always have some form, but you have to have extra mask when you're gonna dine on mountain, et cetera. But skiers and snowboarders are, have always been comfortable with the idea of masking. So that's a little bit helpful for this winter that we don't have to ask them too much. And, and of course, through the summer and fall, they've learned how to have masks with them. Um, just wanted to point out a few new openings in 2021 with residences and what news is uh, for lodging. On the left is Goldner Hirsch, this is an Austrian style inn. It's a small inn that has expanded 40 residences in a very modern style that you can see there. Um, and they are gonna be open starting November 1st. So that we'll have them here for the ski season. The food at this restaurant, the Goldner Hirsch restaurant is extraordinary. Um, so we're excited. We're gonna have a media fam that will include the Goldner Hirsch this year. 
um, and that is located on Deer Valley Resort. On the other side, Park City Mountain is also going to get a new property called Pendry Park City. There is a Pendry in Baltimore and a Pendry in San Diego currently. So now there's going to be a Pendry in the Canyons Resort. Pendry is a sister property of the Montage brand. Uh, Montage has their Deer Valley Resort that we mentioned, but Pendry is going to be on Park City Mountain side. So that'll be in the same Canyons Village as Westgate Resort and Waldorf Astoria. And there's another property opening in November called Yotel, which is part of Benchmark Hospitality Group, which has properties all across the country and in Japan as well. Um, but the Yotel will be opening also in um, Park City Village this year. So we have a lot of activity. And then Marriott has a new brand, newer brand called AC by, Mary, AC by Marriott. And uh, they're opening in Kimball Junction, which is the sort of gateway entry to Park City from Salt Lake City. And I mentioned the wide range of, of properties and rates. And AC by Marriott, it will be very popular. It's near the Best Western, which is a beautiful Best Western. And we have a Holiday Inn uh, in that location as well. And then New Park Resort, which is a great resort for families, um, but it's not, um, it, it's been in Kimball Junction for a while. us to our final slide we wanted to share something that's very special to park city which is the olympics of course in 2020 we were supposed to have the summer games in tokyo which have been pushed now to 2021 here in park city um, we were part of the 2002 salt lake city winter games which was the last olympic games to take place on u.s soil and park city played a pretty big role in those games and we have just down the street from us the utah olympic park which is still an active training facility for a lot of athletes we have a large volume of primarily winter athletes that live in park city year-round for training because we have the u.s ski and snowboard um, based here in town however we do have a lot of athletes that compete in both seasons of the games and we do see a lot of summer athletes coming to our destination as well for high altitude training because we have the facilities here to help them do that. And Utah Olympic Park is a, a really stellar uh, place to go to kind of get the, the vibe of what it's like to be in an Olympic centric community because there are uh, museums where you can learn about the games and learn about some of the local athletes. There are outdoor activity offerings that you can um, sign up, um, pay and sign up to explore year round as well over on the the right side you see a picture of the bobsled track which um, guests can sign up for and do a section of the track with a someone who's well well versed in leading an actual bobsled down the track and in the winter of course it will be on ice and in the summer it will be on uh, kind of like a roller blade system on the bobsled so that's really unique offering that we have in town and, and certainly very special so 2021 coming ahead and with those games we are very excited despite it being a summer games not a winter games we really feel the, the energy no matter what because we have a lot of local talent here that it really means a lot to and who represent our town yeah it's very common during the olympic broadcasts which are always tape delayed for the united states that in Park City, everyone is staying up in real time at whatever ever hour it is um, to follow these athletes, and they've known them personally. You know, we have coaches and trainers, and you know, physicians, and just an Olympic level of uh, of expertise here. And so we get excited, and we're very much a part of Olympic coverage. Prior, even if it's a summer games. Um, the media will always talk to us about what these Olympians are up to and what their training routines are. And of course, the high altitude training helps for any sport. So we get excited in an Olympic year. It just adds something extra for us. So it's one more thing for us to look forward to in 2021. And we see a lot of kids that come to the Utah Olympic Park because it's set up to keep kids' Olympic dreams alive and let them see videos of former Olympians and what it was like to be in the Olympics here and just be a part of their journey. And, and, and we love being part of, of that um, attraction. It's, it's great and it's located right outside of the Kimball Junction area before you get up to the Canyons Village of Park City Mountain. 
We have come to the end of our formal presentation. We're excited to hear what questions some of the things that we've talked about spurred with you, and we'll do our very best to answer them. And we're going to have our contact information up for the remainder of the presentation. So thank you so much for being part of this today. We can't wait to hear from you. Okay, thank you so much, Dan and Rachel. We do have some questions. Uh, we'll start with, uh, Paula had a question. She said, uh, what hotel has the school academy that you were talking about in the beginning? Yeah, it's called the Montage Academy. So it was the, I think the second hotel slide that I um, put up there. It's been well covered. If you Google Montage Academy, you'll see a lot of the media coverage that has been um, received by the hotel since it opened as part of this summer, or the, actually back to school um, distance learning. Okay, great, great, that's good to know. Um, Paul has another question about, uh, to clarify Deer City, and it may be Deer Valley, yeah. normally has yeah. a daily limit. Uh, so will that change or is that kind of a set thing? Deer Valley has always had a capacity control well before there was a pandemic to keep lines short. And um, also it helps with their grooming standards to have only a certain number of skiers on the mountain every day. I do believe that COVID will reduce that number. We're not going to get a specific number from Deer Valley of what that capacity number will be, but it's always been something that the resort controls. And it's just not a, a ski resort that will just keep selling tickets as long as there's demand. They really want to keep it a very special experience for every day. Um, and we believe that number will be smaller this year um, because of social distancing requirements. And they want to keep those ski lift lines short. So they're going to definitely have that capacity. But even after this is behind us, Deer Valley will always have a capacity con controlled property. And, and now it sounds like Park City Mountain with their reservation system is looking for something similar. But in their case, they have the largest terrain in the United States. So it will be easy, it will be easy to socially distance on Park City Mountain this year. <laughs> okay, great. thank you. Um, Andy has a question about uh, indoor dining. Is it allowable now in yes. Park City and yes. what percent of capacity? So it always has been allowed um, through the summer, through the fall. Um, they have changed what the table spacing has to be. And in terms of mandatory mask, that is in, needing to be in place when you walk into the restaurant. But as you sit down with at your table with your party, it's not mandatory to have a mask on while you're dining, but you'll put it on again when you leave the restaurant. Uh, every city and every state is doing this differently, but in Park City, um, they've, they definitely have allowed indoor dining and allowing people to enjoy their meals without wearing a face mask, as long as you've got one when you go in from the front door and go back out. Okay, good deal. Uh, let's see, Paula has another question. Um, so Woodward Park City is the terrain park basically at Park City. Is that accurate? So it's not at Park City. It is its own entity. Uh, Powder Corporation is the owner of Woodward Park City. Um, it's near Kimball Junction, which is that gateway community that I mentioned when you're coming in from Salt Lake. So it's the first ski active area you'll see coming in from the Salt Lake Airport. Even before you get into Kimball Junction, you'll see Woodward on the right of Highway 80. And um, it is not affiliated with Park City Mountain. It is its own. And, and what makes it unique, Rachel mentioned it, it's, it's gonna be great for the winter, but it also it operates all summer and fall um, for action sports and training and they've got big foam pits and you just see the kids learning how to do flips and all sorts of exciting things and they've got great instruction and it's, it's open every single day of the year which our ski resorts are not there are, are sections of the year where the ski where our Deer Valley Resort and Park City Mountain Resort are closed in those shoulders but Woodward Park City is open every day okay thank you um, 
Another question from Paula about, uh, are there ever any incentives for Canadian travelers at e either the ski resorts or any of the attractions? Canadian at par or discounts, anything like that? You know, we just love Canadians. We, there are so many Canadians that ski and snowboard with us and they fit in this, you just talk, you end up talking to Canadians almost every day when you're out in Park City. Um, and I hope it never changes. Um, but there aren't specific incentives for it. Um, and right now, the, the border is, is causing delays in, in Canadians booking because we want to make sure everyone can go back and forth freely. Rachel and I work with Canadian media throughout the year. Um, we were fortunate to have a Canadian visitor just this past weekend who drove here from Toronto as part of a cross country uh, visit. And I was so happy to, to have her here with Travel Week Canada. Um, but there isn't anything specific um, and we and we don't know uh, if I were to anticipate I, I don't think that we're gonna have as many Canadians skiing with us this year as we would normally and I think that they in most cases would look at their their own ski mountains more than they would normally look at us but those who really love Park City choose us because our weather is better it's warmer especially for the spring and um, it's got a, a unique Western vibe that's just different from Canada. So we love seeing that they, they like to come ski and snowboard with us. Um, but no, I, unfortunately, you know, we just don't even know what flights are gonna be operating regularly from Canada. We usually have nine stops from Toronto, from Calgary and from Vancouver on a regular basis. But this year, I just don't know if there's even gonna be demand to keep those um, flights going this winter. Right, a lot of unknowns right now. Yeah. Um, got a short answer or a short answer <laughs> question for you. What is the altitude of the town? Uh, Janie Pace wants to know. We sit at 7,000 feet. The Park City Mountain and Deer Valley Resort both have peaks between nine and 10,000 feet in elevation, but the best answer for the base area and Main Street is 7,000 feet. Yeah, 7,000, and that actually, for perspective, is significantly lower than a lot of the towns that are in Colorado. We get a lot of visitor requests saying, will you be able to send oxygen to our room? And, and, and at 7,000 feet, very few people need oxygen. So they've experienced the, the, it, the need at higher altitude mountains, but our town is not that high. When you land in Salt Lake City International Airport, you're at 4,500. So you have a, a 2,500 climb, um, which is only, as I mentioned before, 25 minutes. Um, but um, if you're really, really sensitive, uh, some people stay in Salt Lake for a day before they'll come up to Park City. But that is a very rare person that would be feeling that at that level. Okay, good to know. Um, now we have a few questions from some of the earlier slides, and I'm not sure exactly which photo they're talking about, but you probably will. Uh, first, Linda has a question. Where's the photo of yoga on the left? Uh -huh. Yes, and I did write into the chat box as well. So the yoga on the left is at the Homestead Crater, which is in Midway, Utah, and that's located right by the ice castle that we were also talking about. Now, the stand-up paddleboard yoga specifically is only offered through Park City Yoga Adventures, so I did want to make that clear. But yes, that is called the Homestead Crater, again, in Midway, Utah. Yeah, and Midway is special. Midway has the ice castles that we showed you. Midway has this Homestead Crater. And in Labor Day, Midway has something called Swiss Days, because Midway is a Swiss town. Um, so lots of Swiss music and uh, a lot of cheese <laughs> and uh, Swiss games. It's, it's so nice. It's 30 minutes from our main street in the county right next to ours. And very few people know about Midway and its Swiss days, but I think it's a fun um, activity. And then one of our big rivers that was mentioned, one of our blue ribbon rivers, the Provo, has a section right through Midway. And so you can sort of combine that with a, a day um, fly fishing out there. Okay, great. And uh, did you address the question about the pool, uh, Rachel? 
the full on the right side yeah. of that slide yeah. was that spa montage at Montage yeah. Valley. Okay, great. Um, does Park City have a hashtag? Hashtag visit Park City. Good deal. Easy to remember. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then Corey had a question. Uh, can you explain what uh, ski in and ski out uh, means? To, some people know, obviously, but some people are not familiar with those terms. Yeah, and, and so I'll tell you the story of when I um, called the tourism board at Whistler and I said, what percentage of your lodging is ski in, ski out? And they said, literally 100%. And I said, that's not possible. <laughs> but, but that is because a lot of places like to use the term, we're ski in, ski out. But in Park City, unless you're literally able to walk out of the front door on your skis, you're not considered true ski in, ski out. We have a higher percentage of properties where that's possible, where people literally are having their skis, in many cases, they're being put on for them by our resorts. Um, they don't even have to touch their skis. But then they are on their skis, walk out the door, and are on ski trails. And that is what we call true ski in, ski out. And it, it isn't well reported. Um, it, the, a lot of media don't make the distinction and they're not careful with it. And then, uh, but, all, but our properties know better. And uh, I'll give you a good example. The Washington Schoolhouse, which is, I've mentioned earlier, right a block from Main Street and it's a perfect location. But if you're a skier, it's not, ideal in terms of being true ski in ski out now it's not far from the mountain and they'll help you get on the mountain but they would never advertise themselves as true ski in ski out because in our community we know what that means and if you have a property that can do that it's important and it's special and, it, and if you've ever had kids on a ski trip you know how important it is because they're complaining if they have to carry their own equipment or they have to walk anywhere you're gonna hear about it. So if we can do anything to take the stress out of a family ski holiday by offering true ski and ski out properties for them, um, they're grateful and then they'll, they'll come back the next year because it just makes it so much easier for them. Okay, thank you. Corey, do you wanna ask your dog question? <laughs> Mute. Sure, I get to ask my dog question, of course. <laughs> I always go to the dogs, right? Um, so can you tell us more about dog sledding and the act about the activity? Um, I've heard of it happening in Alaska, but not in other areas, so. Yeah, there are only a couple of vendors in Park City, but it is very popular. The vendor that we love the most is All Seasons Adventures. And they have this big field space that um, is just flat snow and they have this track built out and they have um, professional dog sled, what's the, mus, mus, mushers? Mushers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mushers. I don't know if I'm to say that out loud. <laughs> yes, they have uh, people who are trained to operate these sleds. And so guests can sign up and depending on your height and body weight, you know, if we're talking kids versus adults, they can get two to three people on the sleds typically. Uh, and then the length of time will vary. You can sign up for either half hour sessions, hour sessions, um, and it's really great that, uh, that they have that because, again, you can't find it everywhere, but we are very fortunate that there is a Park City mm -hmm. vendor who does have the connections and, and offers that. And it's much warmer in Utah than Alaska. Yes. Um, and I will say, by the way, that when, these, when you see some of these dog teams, especially when there are newborn little huskies running around, it's outrageous. They're the cutest things. And they just, and they're so excited when it's time to go, they want to go and, um, you know, do this with our guests. Um, I will um, caution that as it gets closer to the end of ski season in the late spring, the dog sledding operations close earlier than some of the other ski offerings or snow offerings, just because the track and the sun um, reduces their ability to do uh, safe dog sledding. Um, in, if you haven't experienced Park City in the spring, it is an extremely different environment than what we're about to enter with the festive season in January and February. The, the difference between winter skiing and spring skiing in Utah is, is extremely different. 
Um, you literally can ski in your t-shirts in the spring. We don't have a lot of snowfall, fresh snow coming, but there's enough snowpack from the winter to be able to keep skiing all the way through mid-April. But your skiing in the sun is on your face the whole time. Um, and a lot of people love to ski during the, the big snowfall, the, the powder days. And a lot of people avoid powder days. So it's, it's a question of what your favorite kind of experience is. Um, but spring skiing does, is a very different experience than, than powder day winter skiing. Before Scott goes on, I just want to ask, what happens to the dog sledding during off season? Can you visit the park, the dog places, or are they totally closed? I believe they're totally closed. I know it's a third party service that All Seasons Adventures works with, and I'm not actually certain if the, uh, the dogs remain in Utah. I'm not sure the owner, if he relocates to a field somewhere where the dogs can run around. But yeah. no, we have not seen it as a summer offering to visit the dogs. However, we do have Nuzzles & Co. in town, which is um, our local adoption center. It's a no-kill shelter. So I'll give them a little plug. And they're always looking for dog walkers and they always have puppies and other lovable adult dogs as well. So. And I need to say that, that Park City's unofficial nickname is called Bark City everyone in this town has a dog. The only questions you get when you move into Park City are what breed are you going to have and what color Subaru do you drive? Those are the questions that every new person gets and everyone has a dog and a lot of our hotels have canine ambassadors in their lobbies that greet guests. A lot of our hotels are pet friendly and in a normal year on October 31st, uh, our main street is closed for the Halloween parade where it's the dogs that are dressed up and everyone uh, it's it's a very much a dog friendly town and that in, goes for most of our restaurants as well. Okay thank you Dan. Uh, we just have a few more questions we need to wrap this up in, in the interest of time. Uh, Paul has another question uh, with planning in mind are there spots where you can order in if you need to via Uber Eats or food delivery services? Absolutely, and it was really successful all summer. We were so grateful because it kept our local restaurants in business, and we know that will continue throughout the winter, and we know that a lot of people will be staying inside their residences or uh, condos. So yeah, if you're not in a hotel specifically with their outlets that are there, uh, it's very easy to order food in Park City from our local restaurants for dining after the ski slopes close. Okay, great. Uh, Linda Stewart wants to uh, know, she says, um, I will be traveling to Utah next May. Can you talk a little bit about the spring season in the area? So May is that other shoulder. It's, it's a different shoulder than the, the fall shoulder that I talked about because uh, we're waiting for the snow to melt uh, and Memorial Day is the official start of our summer season. So the month of May is definitely not um, a high season at all. And there are some benefits to that. You can definitely socially distance. We will not have a lot of guests here. We had a journalist from Boston who visited us at the end of the ski season for right in the middle of that shoulder. And he just had the best time. He, he said, I couldn't believe how much, how many restaurants were still open, all the bars were still open, the clubs and the food quality and how friendly everyone was. But it was like a small town. It's the smallest population that Park City will have all year long, will be in May. You know, the town kind of expands and contracts with the season. Um, but most people will have, if they have second homes here, they will have gone back to their first homes by May. Um, it's a beautiful time. We love the spring because you're starting to see things grow. It's starting to get really green here after our winter has been all white and brown. <laughs> and um, the, the May is a beautiful time. The skies are continuing to be sunny, just like with our April spring skiing, the skies continue to be very, very blue in May and helps burn off all of our snow. And the, the trails start opening for biking and hiking very, very uh, quickly in May. It's amazing how quickly the town just flips from uh, winter sports to summer and May is in that shoulder, but it really is more connected to June than it is connected to April in terms of how quickly things tend to, to be ready 
So there's plenty to do, but it, it's, a, it's a special time for more quiet time. Okay, thank you, Dan. Um, one last question and then a few closing comments. Uh, Joanne Bat Bowen says, most enjoyable webinar. Please tell us more about any winter fam trips. Well, we're really not operating because we don't know how the mountains are going to be at capacity to help us with, with media. In the past, that's never been a question. Um, but I do think that this winter, we're going to be limited with our ability to bring media in because of mountains. Now, we may have the opportunity to bring media in for non-mountain activity. Um, and we're very comfortable doing individual dates as long as they're away from our big blackout dates, which are Christmas to New Year's, Sundance Film Festival, and President's Week, which has become sort of a national ski holiday. Um, so we, we, we definitely don't get cooperation from the resorts or hotels to host during those blackout periods. But outside of those, we can look at um, some media requests knowing that the ski resorts are not likely to be able to work with us on media fans the way they would have in previous years because of the mountain capacity that we've spoken about. But please email us. You've got Rachel and you've got my email. If you've got some dates in mind and you have a, you know, we, what we really love in terms of pitching is tell us what the story angle is that you're, you know, planning to cover that you're especially interested in. And we love the unique approaches. Park City has so many unique angles that we love stories that aren't similar to each other. So let us know what your readers or followers are interested in and why you think Park City is a good match for that and what the dates are, what the um, price range of the accommodations that your readers and followers are mostly interested in so that we can match you with a property that really will be relevant for your followers and readers. And, um, you know, I think though, and, and then whatever activities that are on your bucket list, um, so that'll help us to know if there's a potential fit based on what our members here, our businesses here have capacity for. Right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dan and Rachel. Corey, do you have some uh, closing comments? Yes, I do. Um, besides thanking Dan and Rachel, this was great. I, I know I want to come, but off season fall. <laughs> I love this yeah. color, the, the fall colors. Yeah. Um, we don't get that in Los Angeles. Yeah, we would love to have you in fall. We love that story. We love that angle. Okay. Well, now I know how I can get there. Um, anyway, what I want to let everybody know is the upcoming schedule of webinars. On November 4th, as you probably saw, we got the invite for the Corning and the Finger Lakes. Uh, I need everybody to sign up before Sunday. Actually, if we can do it Friday, because our first batch of uh, people who've signed up is going out on Friday to get your wine share. So please sign up for that immediately and include your home address. That's the only way you're going to get wine. And I can't remember everybody's address. Um, uh, that should be really good. We already have 17 people signed up. Uh, ben, I want to mention that on, oh God, I forget the date. November, I think it's 16th or the 18th, whatever the Wednesday is, sorry. Uh, we have Birmingham, Alabama. And then our first, I think I should put a calendar in front of me, sorry. Um, our, uh, that'll be the 18th, I'm sorry. And then on December 2nd, we're gonna have a uh, professional development um, webinar. It'll be improve your uh, online presence, bios and media kits. So uh, just want to give you those. And with that, I think we can say we're, we're done and we'll keep you posted. I mean, we've got a good schedule even already starting for next year. Um, so I hope we'll see you at the next webinar. And again, I want to thank Dan and Rachel um was really great so i hope everybody had a, enjoyed the webinar very much so
Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night.